You are tuning in to the Atlanta Realtors Rundown, the official podcast for the Atlanta Realtors. We're here to keep you updated with the latest trends, topics, and keep you in the know of our ever-changing Atlanta market. We hope you enjoy this episode. Well, hello, everyone. Uh, Welcome back to the Atlanta Realtors Rundown. We really appreciate you being here and listening in. If you have not yet subscribed and left us a review on the podcast, we would love to have you do that. Hopefully you're gaining some value, some insight and some perspective and education as well as entertaining content here as well. Super excited for today's episode. I'm your host, Matt LaMarche. um, And uh, I'm really excited about this. I think a lot of agents were going to take a lot of value away from this because we talked about relationships and we talked about Uh, social media, and we talked about a lot of different things. But today we're talking about cultivating your real estate business through sphere of influence, which everyone has a sphere of influence, whether they utilize it or not or realize it or not. Uh, So today I'm super excited to have Ariel in the studio with us today talking all things sphere of influence. And uh, Ariel, tell us a little bit about you, uh, what part of town you work in, um, you know, how long you've been in real estate, your involvement with ARA kind of give us the Reader's Digest version, if you will. Okay, (laughs) so the quick version. My name's Ariel Baverman. I was born and raised in Sandy Springs. I am fourth generation realtor. Amazing, I did not know that. Yeah, so my my grandparents owned a brokerage eventually. My grandma (laughs) started out as a salesperson and and bought the company, but her in-laws had been in real estate previously. And some people know my mom is a broker here in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. We had a business together for about 15 years um, before I was like, let's, you know, (laughs) cut the apron strings. (laughs) So we ended on very good terms and still talk 12 times a day. Well, that's good. (laughs) Um, And my grandma was in town the day that I um, went to go pick up my license when I passed the test. So that was very exciting. So it's in your blood. It is. So the question is, how long have I been in real estate? I remember going on a showing with my mom when I was about five years old, (laughs) and it was the first time I saw a two-story foyer. Oh, wow. And I was enthralled. I love it. And I said to the guy, if you don't buy this house, I will. (laughs) (laughs) Because I just loved this, like, gorgeous curved staircase and the high ceilings. My mom was cracking up. (laughs) Um, But I was licensed back in 2006, and I've been in real estate full-time since then. So you guys can do the math. Excellent. Well, yeah, we'll let them. We'll let them get to that. Yeah. Um, as far as um, your experience, just just quickly here, because mm-hmm. I think a lot of people, um, you know, think about the real estate business as one thing, but it's multiple things. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of different people and ways that people can get involved with the association. But talk to us just super briefly about your experience with the association, your different positions, um, you know, the biggest gains that you've had from the association. Yeah. So I'm not sure if I remember the first time that I showed up to volunteer. <laughs> Um, It's one of those things where I just realized that I'm serving on committees. Um, There were very – there were multiple iterations of training and development committees that I served on. It was, I think, at one point called the Professional Development Committee. There was a green committee where we focused on sustainability and Mm -hmm. green options, and that committee has also seen – you know, it's boomeranged. Um, But most recently, I was the 2022 chairperson for our training and development. So what we did was, you know, we put together the free six free CE classes, and um, minimum of six educational seminars that are not for CE credit. Mm -hmm. Um, But I've been involved with the training and development for, I don't know, I think at least the last 12 years. I love that. Well, and not a lot of people realize that that's the value of being an association member. So if you're part of ARA, you're part of GAR, and you're part of NAR, and all of these organizations offer different education opportunities and uh, seminars and stuff like you mentioned. But literally to be able to knock out six hours of CE every year is a huge benefit. It's actually 18. It's six classes of three oh, hours wow. okay. a piece. See, I'm learning. If I did the math right. I love it. Um, and I also serve on the Board of Governors, which is for Capitus. That's our real estate school here. Gotcha. So we also are, you know, doing a broad overview look at what types of other classes and designation courses that we're going to be bringing to our members. I love that. And if there's something that someone out there is like, man, we should really do a class on this. Great news. You can join the committee. You can yes. make your suggestion <laughs> and get involved. That's the easiest way to get things done. Absolutely. <laughs> I love that. Well, so today we're talking sphere of influence. And again, whether you realize it or not, you have one. 
Um, you know, even if it's only 10 people, every real estate agent, every realtor out there has a sphere of influence. Um, some are bigger than others, some are better than others. And, you know, I think really fostering a community, a group of people around you and your business is really important. Obviously, we're small business owners. So talk to us a little bit about just your 30,000 foot view on sphere of influence. What, how do you define it? But also, how do you use your sphere of influence? Right. So your sphere of influence is really the people that you know that when you think of, you know, who would I ask for help with something or who would come to me to ask for advice, right? Who are your neighbors? Who are the parents of your kids' friends, right? The parents of your play groups, um, people that you interact with at your place of worship or your neighborhood association um, or even other activities that you're involved in, right? It could be your backgammon team, Mm -hmm. like, you know, any sort of activity that you do that you're interested in, or you're sharing a common interest with other people, that's really your sphere of influence. But it's also just not limited to that. It's it's also your vendors, right? Mm -hmm. It's your closing attorneys and your home inspectors and your mortgage lenders and things like that. Um, So your sphere of influence is, is really just that, right? Like, who do you share influence with? People that ask you for things and people that you feel you could go to to ask for help. Yeah, and I think the vendors really get missed a lot because we're normally sending them business or referrals or clients to work with. But that can be a two-way street. (laughs) It can be. I mean, most people are not going to contact their home inspector before they go (laughs) on the market because they're just not going to know who these home inspectors are. Um, But, you know, they're still people outside of their job. And they still have other family members or neighbors or even, you know, if they have to sell their house themselves. Well, and everyone knows other people that are in this industry, whether right. they're a lender or, uh, you know, their brother-in-law is an inspector or an right. appraiser. I mean, I've gotten a lot of referrals from inspectors and, um, and, and appraisal people that have friends, have family. And, mm-hmm. you know, that's simply just because of the relationship that I've established with them. I may not have ever sent them any business, but, you know, that's, that's how this, this all works. We're all connected in some former fashion. So six degrees of Kevin Bacon, hundred percent. So I I love that you kind of started there because I think that that's the main thing that a lot of people get into this business and kind of miss it's relationships, right? It is. It's not about collecting a list of names and spamming them. Right. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. Every networking event that you're passing out your card and getting 20 back in and then going home and, you know, banging away on the keyboard for a while to say, Hey, if you need Neva, if you want to buy, sell or invest in real estate, I can be your guy. Uh, probably not the best approach. So what is the best approach? Like when, we, when we're out meeting people, when I'm at my backgammon club, <laughs> how do I, sure how do I engage is. with people? How do I broach the subject? Because I think this is something, you know, a lot of us agents are, we don't want to be salesy. We don't want to be that guy or that girl that is, you know, constantly forcing right. uh, what we do on other people. So how do you kind of broach that subject, especially in, you know, we'll call it your third spot. So your club, your your religious organization, wherever you're, you're talking about. So I would say, you know, the benefit of having this coming out of this crazy market and the environment that we're in right now, everybody's asking what's going on with the economy, what's Mm -hmm. going on in the market. And if you, you know, kind of stay up to date on that and have a 20 second elevator spiel on it, it's always going to come up in some conversation. It really doesn't matter what situation you're in, it's going to come up. And so I would say, I think that's the easiest way that it comes up these days. Mm -hmm. And because we don't want to be salesy, especially with our friends, right? right? But I will tell you, there was the moment that I realized that I was doing this wrong. I was at a friend's birthday party and they said, oh, we're under contract on a house. We had our inspection yesterday. And I think my face just dropped and I was like oh that's cool and they go oh my god we forgot that's what you do isn't it and I said yeah Hmm. and it's because I didn't want to go around at all the social events saying like hey don't forget if you need to buy or sell real estate come to me this was when we were in our young 20s and they were you know some of the first friends that were buying because with my age group we kind of graduated college and hit a rough economy so Um, There wasn't a whole lot of people in their young 20s back then buying. Sure. Um, So 
you know, I thought I didn't, I can't blame them for not coming to me because I didn't do a good enough job of reminding them that that's what I do, but not in a salesy way because sure. who wants to be sold to at your own birthday party? <laughs> so, <laughs> right. So the thing mm-hmm. is, is about when you, and look, these were people that I went on double dates with, mm-hmm. right? But I just never wanted to talk about work when yeah. I was in social settings. But now I know that it does come up right. and it's okay to talk about what we do because honestly, if that's what I'm doing for 16 hours a day, it takes up a big part of my life, sure, right? Sure. So, but I think the easiest way to, you know, approach that is, you know, when somebody says, oh, how's your week? You can say, you know, well, I was showing some property this week and we ran into this really funny situation or, you know, so there's soft ways to bring it up that's not a selling way. And then if people are always interested, they're always going to ask you more questions about yeah. it and they're going to remember, mm-hmm. they're going to remember that that's what you do. Yeah. Well, and my, my favorite follow up question to how is the market with friends, family, colleagues, like, oh, you know, why, why are you asking? Yeah, what, what's going on? <laughs> why, why do you ask? Because to me that opens up, like if you just say good, the market's good or bad, if the market's bad, it doesn't um, give them any context. It doesn't give them any context, but you're also not adding any value. Mm-hmm. Like, to me, everything's relative to those people and contextual to those. You don't know if they're thinking about buying or selling until you ask, right? right. The answer is always no. But I think that question really kind of puts people back on their feet a little bit. And then, and I've found this more often than not, well, my brother-in-law, my mm-hmm. cousin, my nephew, my grandparents need to get out of this house and downsize and get into right. that house. Oh, well... How are you guys talking to someone? You know, right. and and then the momentum really starts. And I I think that's something that really often gets missed. And I'm just as guilty, by the way, of how's the market? Good, good, it's good. We're moving. You know, inventory's up, interest rates are up. As, but, you know, especially when we're panicking. Exactly. Like we've had a really rough week. We're like, it's fine. <laughs> that's exactly right. No, I love that. Well, so talk to us a little bit about you know the the systems and processes that you have in place now. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, several years later that you've learned because I I. I I'm pretty sure most people that have been in this business for more than like five minutes can relate. Oh, I missed that deal or I missed that opportunity because I wasn't in front of people because Mm -hmm. I didn't have those conversations. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know about you, but my phone doesn't constantly ring going, you know, hey, Matt, how's the market? Uh, Hey, Matt, we're thinking about selling. Like, that's just not the nature of our business. We have to constantly be proactive with our communications and stuff. So tell us a little bit about your systems processes, how you utilize your sphere in your business, but also... Um, Maybe some success stories that have come along with that as well. Yeah. So several years ago, I was using a CRM that I really, really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. And for those new people out there, that means uh, contact relationship management system. Um, But that one, you know, isn't around anymore. And I haven't found anything that I like as much. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of old school. I keep everything in my Google contacts (laughs) and Excel spreadsheets. Hey, if it works. (laughs) Right. And well, the thing, this is like the little nerd in me. I really enjoy a Google, like an Excel spreadsheet, <laughs> right? You can color code it. You can save different copies of yeah. it to do different things. Um, and so, you know, my my systems are always evolving, right? Because something can work for so long, but if it's not scalable, if it can't grow with you, if it is too difficult to keep track of, then you're not going to use it. Right. And this is where I'm just going to insert here. The best CRM is the one that you're going to use. Mm -hmm. It could be free or it could cost you like $1,000 a month. But if it costs you $1,000 a month and you're not using it, it's not a good CRM. Um, So the thing is I just try to (laughs) – I try to keep in touch with everybody on a regular basis. Regular – varies, right? <laughs> I'm here to tell you that I am not perfect, right, right, right. <laughs> but I'm doing okay. Yeah. Um, you know, we're not machines. And I think the thing that reaches people the most is when they realize that we are people and we're just, you know, doing what we do to pay our bills and mm-hmm. feed ourselves and keep a roof over our heads, sure. right? So we don't need to be machines. We don't need to be computers ourselves. Mm -hmm. The whole thing is about relationships. So, you know, there are people that, yeah, of course, I'm closer to those people. I have friends I talk to multiple times a day. I don't really need to keep track of, oh, I already talked to this person six times today. Now I'm not going to talk to her for six months. That's not, you know, the case, right? Um, But making sure that I am 
touching base with people. I use, there are certain things that I utilize, like I have a monthly e-newsletter that I send out. Mm -hmm. And there's really only like one or two small real estate things in there because for the most part, that's not what people are thinking about top of mind every single day, day, day in, day out, sure. if they're not in real estate, right? Yeah. But what are they thinking about? They might be wondering about what am I supposed to, you know, is, are there home maintenance tips that mm -hmm. I need to be working that's on? Important, yeah. During the holidays, I really like to send out easy last-minute recipes because, like, mm -hmm. oh, you forgot that you have to go to your cousin's <laughs> house today? Here's a five-minute recipe <laughs> that everybody's going to like. I love that. I love um, that. What's, what else is in there that you're – I mean, obviously, again, depending mm -hmm. on the time of year, but is there anything – like, is there a piece of Ariel in there? Do we get to there see is. the book she's reading, the podcast she's Ooh, listening to? I don't tell doing? a lot of people about the books I read, but <laughs> 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 my – I'm falling short of my goal this year. The last couple of years, I've read 100 books a year. Wow. If you do want to see what books I read, you can go to my Goodreads. <laughs> um, many of those are romance novels. <laughs> but I um, I love Ellen Hildebrand and Good Beach Read and gotcha. uh, Mary Kay Andrews. Gotcha. But I also really love a murder mystery. <laughs> so if there's a good female-led detective series, I'm reading it. Sure. Um, but the other thing that is highlighted in my newsletter is local events around town. Because the thing about real estate is that it's all local, right? Mm -hmm. People want to know, like, if I moved into this area, why did I move here? I right. moved here because there are cool things to do. There are fun places to go to eat. And there are things that are happening. Mm -hmm. So I have a lot of people that just moved to the area or people that, you know, moved during COVID. They don't know what goes on mm -hmm. in their town. Right. So I highlight things that are going on like everywhere. Yeah. Right. And so that, that part kind of stopped during COVID because there were no activities, mm -hmm. but now it's like I'm inundated with there's festivals all the time. There's chili cook-offs, there's <laughs> holiday lightings. There's a lot of pent up demand for sure. <laughs> there is, you know, <laughs> concerts and comedy shows. So um, those are the kinds of things that I highlight. And then I also, you know, feature my listings and things like that. Mm. Um, you know, but it's more about staying top of mind just in terms of she's a wealth of knowledge about these areas. Yeah. And also, you know, that I'm also telling people if you need a vendor, mm -hmm. right? Do you need a painter? Yeah. Do you need a flooring guy? Do you need a decorator? So if people are coming to you for all of their needs – for their housing, then they're also going to remember to come to you when they're going to be selling. Well, especially when they get a great referral or recommendation from mm -hmm. you, that person does a phenomenal job. They're easy yeah. to communicate with. And and this is why that vetting process is so important, right? Whether for sure. it's for our referral agents, right, out there that are a lot of people are moving into Atlanta still. So we have agents from all over the world literally referring business into Atlanta. Um, but also like the vendors you mentioned, because when they have an awesome experience with that vendor, who the, they're going to remember that you <laughs> gave them your number and vice versa. And, and you're exactly right. I think it, that's a huge missed opportunity. And that's easy. That's literally an email for who do you need to know? Like, who would be about, are you thinking about doing a renovation in 2023 or 2024? Let's talk about it. Let's get right. you some quotes. Let's get you some people that know what they're doing and are qualified and licensed and so on and so forth. Absolutely. But that's a huge value add. And, and if you don't have the people, you can go get them. <laughs> exactly. And I think the thing to keep in mind is that I don't really, I don't do that just so that I can get the business. Right, right. I, if Have you ever done the book Strength Finders? Mm -mm. Okay, so it's a really cool book where you take this test online and then it comes back with your top five strengths. Okay. Well. And the really interesting thing about m the results that I got from that was one of the things that came back as my strength was identified to me in preschool as a weakness. Mm. And so then the book, it has different chapters for all those different traits and it helps you, tells you how to maximize mm -hmm. that key part of your personality. But one of mine is connector. Mm -hmm. So it's something that I really cannot stop my brain from doing when I meet somebody new right. and they're telling me about a problem that they have or something that they're going through. I'm immediately trying to think about who do I know that can help them with yeah. this? I love that. And so, you know, when somebody's like, I don't know, I'm having a problem. I hate my bathroom and I really want to do something about it. I'm thinking, okay, like what part of town are you and do you want to just retile? Do you want to you know, do a full blown like redo, reload, uh, um, renovation. You want to mm -hmm. take space from another room. Who do I know that can help you with yeah. that? Do you need a de designer as well? Mm. And that's really just because 
my brain's always working to try to make those connections for people. And I think if you've positioned yourself well, it the conversation doesn't always sound like, because I got a call like this a couple, a couple months ago about, hey, Matt, we're thinking about, we bought a house with you two years ago. We're thinking about adding this or changing that or doing this. And we need referrals, but we also want to know what's the value. Like, it doesn't always go like that. It's not mm -hmm. immediate business or even future business necessarily. Right. But when you're able to connect this, and that's such an important trait, I think a lot of people, again, kind of miss out on. But um, so for the new agents specifically, like, let's talk to the people that maybe have only been in the business for maybe like the last three years. Mm -hmm. And all they've known is a white hot market. And they do a couple posts on Facebook. They make a couple calls. Maybe they don't have a CRM yet or they're working on it or, you know, getting organized with all this stuff. What what advice with you? Because I feel like your a lot of what your wisdom is coming from is two different markets, like starting out in a very different market and now to where we are here, you know, right. several years later. What advice would you give new agents that are looking at CRMs, that are looking at their sphere of influence and going, okay, you know, we're, we're recording this in December. This is going to come out sometime in next year. But... What do I need to do to, to really set myself up as far as my sphere of influence goes? How do I need to think about this uh, differently? Right. So I think that the big difference is the, I think the light, we'll call it the life cycle of mm. the transaction, right? So everybody had a very immediate need for the last three years. Right. Nobody was like, mm, we can take our time. Yeah, we got to do it. We got to do it now. It, right. <laughs> so you could meet somebody take them out once or twice, and have them under contract. Mm -hmm. Right now, in December, we know that things are slowing down. Right. It's pretty slow right. compared to the last several months that we've been going through. So you really need to stay in touch with people, mm -hmm. right? And in order to stay in touch with them, you need to know, you know, what did they say the last time I talked to them? Mm -hmm. Did they say, oh, their lease is up? you know, in the fall of 2023, well, if you don't keep in touch with them, trust me, mm -hmm. somebody else will, <laughs> right? And so I think the thing, I'll say the big uh, thing that I feel different upon from the beginning of my career until now is I used to feel a little bit more upset if somebody worked with somebody else. Mm -hmm. Now... I can identify it was probably me that, you know, didn't stay in touch as well as I should, right? Or somebody else was in front of them more. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, you know, the way it goes, yep. right? But there's plenty of business out there. There are plenty of connections to make with people. So I wouldn't spend too much time sweating over the ones that you didn't get. Sure. But I would say if you start to compile who you worked with in the last three years, right, Knowing things about them is very important. Mm -hmm. Part of my, you know, buyer intake process is asking them like, "What's your favorite food? What's your favorite color? When's your birthday? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of restaurants do you like to eat yeah, at?" Yeah. Right? Because then if you're like, "Oh, hey, I, you know, tried out that restaurant that you really liked and it was awesome," or "Oh, I went to this other one and I think you might also like it," right? So I'm talking to them about things that are not just real estate. Right. I'm building an actual connection with them. But I think that's the other thing to keep in mind, right? Like. We're going to want to work with people that we like and that like us. Mm -hmm. And so if you're trying to force a relationship with somebody that's not feeling it, they're not feeling it. It's not a sphere of influence <laughs> well, then. It, it it's makes, just a person, you I know. I think it makes your life as an agent a lot more enjoyable, though, when you're working with people that you enjoy. Absolutely. That appreciate, you know, the value that you add and the conversations and the education. And the, like, all of that's really, really important to get from someone that you already like. Right. Like, especially on the buy side, you spend so much time together. Oh, yeah. Have you? Has anybody <laughs> that you don't like have tried to give you a recommendation for something and you immediately <laughs> thought... I don't know if I'm going to like this just right. because so and so recommended it. I can't stand that Birds person. Of a feather, right? Birds of right. A um, well, no, I love that, and I, and I love what you shared earlier too because that's I think that's a way to get there. Like a lot of people think you got a cold call, you got a door knock, you got to go, and and that's just not the case. You, there are people in your phone, and if you I don't know how this works on Android, so excuse me, Android users, but um, I have an iPhone. So if you go to your contacts and you go all the way down, there's a number there. And it tells you how many people you have in your phone. That's your first CRM. That's your first database right. when you get into the business. Friends, family, past coworkers, right. colleagues. Like, 
your painter that painted your bathroom for you or the, you know, whoever you've got in there, that's your database. And to me, I love what you said because starting out by calling every single one of those people and just saying, hey, I know it's been a little while since we caught up, but I just wanted to tell you, I made a change. I'm in real estate now, have been for about three years, sold this many houses, had this much success with buyers and sellers. And just that update, like people want to hear from us. And I think that right. call reluctance really keeps a lot of people back. To, I don't, uh, and I'm, again, every time you hear Matt critique something, it's because he's critiquing himself, by the way. So Matt raises his hand as the first volunteer and says, I've done this in the past. Um, the hi, how are you? How are things going is the best. Like, they want to hear from you. Yeah. But we don't want to be the people that are bothering people. We don't want to be the people that are uh, taking them away from their family or their job or whatever they're right. doing on the weekends. But on the flip side, think about when... Perhaps as a listing agent, well, I'm not even going to say as a listing agent, when your buyer calls the listing agent directly because they didn't want to bother you. Correct. Right? So that pain that we get in our gut when we hear that that happens mm. is the reason that we should reach out. Now, 100%. if you get nervous on the phone, you can slide dial people mm -hmm. and leave them a voicemail and say, hey, sorry, Miss you. I was just thinking about you. I saw such and such the other day, and it really reminded me of you, and I just wanted to see how you're doing. That's a great point. And text. Or like, texting, yeah. I don't yeah. know about you guys, but my texts are getting like 100% response. <laughs> <laughs> but I've also conditioned my clients and potential clients and even my referral partners that I don't want you to feel like this is a waste of time. Whether right. we're looking at houses or you're buying a house three years from now, I don't want to waste your time. You reach out when you're ready. I'm still going to be in front of you. Right. But reach out when you're ready. You know, we're going to have conversations, set expectations. Like all of this stuff kind of goes together. And I've told them, you're never wasting my time. Because right. if they don't feel that they're wasting my time, now I can't waste your time. Right? right. Like we're going to make sure that our time together is very effective, that we're using it very efficiently, so on and so forth. And I think that just, just that one liner of I don't want to waste your time. And I want to make sure that we're focused on what your goals and objectives are. I think that goes a long, long way because now they're kind of in that same mindset too. Right. So Well, and, you know, my response to people thinking that they might be wasting my time is if you think that you might be ready to make a move, mm -hmm. then looking at property is not a yeah. waste of time. Never and is. even if you decide that you're not buying right now, you based that decision off of seeing what's available. Correct. Right? Correct. So we tested the market – and, you know, determined that now's not the right time. Right. Yeah. So let's shift gears a little bit um, because I think a lot of consumers, you know, have found this podcast through a lot of their realtors. A okay. lot of the people that, um, you know, have been in this building or have driven by one of our events or uh, have seen a social media post or something. Um, so I really – and we try to add a lot of value for clients and consumers uh, that are looking to buy, sell, and invest in – in Atlanta real estate. So talk to us a little bit about the client behavior, because mm -hmm. obviously, you know, we're all different types of realtors, just like there's all different types of clients and consumers out there. Some people are very analytical, other, other people, it's a feeling. Uh, some people are very just black and white and it's numbers only as, you know, investors work typically. And then some are, this is their first home and this is where they're going to start a family. I mean, there's, you know, just a lot of different factors and a myriad of things and reasons why people get into to buying and selling real estate. So for the consumers out there, what advice or recommendations when they're starting this process, whether it's buying, selling, or investing, when they're starting, what should they be looking for in a real estate agent or in a realtor? What would, what are the questions that they should be asking? Should they be talking to multiple people? Like just give us kind of your perspective on how do they become a valuable sphere of influence member with their friends, family, the people that they know that are agents? Right. So if you have bought or sold or invested in real estate in Atlanta previously and you really liked the realtor that you worked with, mm -hmm. then the first thing to do when you're thinking about doing it again is call them back. Right. <laughs> Especially if they did a great job. Especially yeah. if yeah. they did a great job. Um, and along those lines, if they did such a great job, like there are some people that my mom sold houses to, I don't know, 25, 30 years ago, and they're still in the same house. Mm. And I keep checking in with them. They're like, we still love it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not going anywhere. We added on. We finished the basement. We put it. in a pool. Mm. Maybe we'll die here. <laughs> um, 
I'm like, great, let's put that in the will that I get to sell it when you're done, right? Um, but I think, you know, we don't have, you know, there's no like bonuses. There's, you know, there's the, the thing about this business is that we only have what we have, right? Mm-hmm. So the biggest compliment that we can get, if you really enjoyed working with us, then tell your friends and tell your neighbors and tell your coworkers and refer their business to the agent that you really liked working with. And also something that a lot of people don't know is that even if you're moving to another state, we might be able to hook you up with an agent out there that you might like as much as you liked us. 100%. Right? So I think the first step, if you know an agent that you really like, the first step is call them. Because they are also hooked up with a network of lenders, inspectors, attorneys. You know, they could be will and estate attorneys or probate attorneys, right? So call them first because we we do kind of work as teams, right? Um, I would say that's the first step. If you do not know an agent, I would find that potentially hard to believe, but maybe you just stepped foot in Atlanta for the first time Mm -hmm. and you need a recommendation, um, then yes, I would say, you know, interview a couple of people, ask them, how familiar are you with the parts of town that we're looking in? Do you frequently sell here? How many homes do you sell near? Are you part of a team? Are you an individual? If you are part of a team, am I going to be working with you throughout the transaction or am I going to be working with somebody else? And how does that work? Um, And, you know, how can I expect this transaction or their situation to go, right? Like, tell me a little bit about what I'm supposed to know about this. So feel free to interview. But when you feel that connection with somebody, you know, that's a pretty good sign. Yeah, I love that. Well, and, you know, what you just talked about there too is, Abundance mindset in general, because like I feel like when I first got into this business, everyone's competition. Oh, you're a real estate agent? You're my competition, right? But it's not the case, and I think there's a lot more collaboration, especially amongst top producers, that we realize that there is, there is a ton of agents out there, but there's some that only do three or four homes a year, and by design. The average, <laughs> so the NAR statistic is that the average realtor has four transactions a year. Right. Now, I don't know how much of an expert you can be on four transactions a year because right. things are changing all the time. Right. If you're only selling a house once a quarter, those are very different times, right? Um, but, you know, if somebody's saying, oh, well, I individually sell 100 homes a year, how much time do you get to spend with each client? Right. Yeah. Right. Because this is about relationships and we're talking about where somebody's going to be for the most part. Right. Investors, not so much. That's a numbers game. But for everybody else, it's where they're going to be living and spending so much of their time and their life revolves around where they live. Exactly. And clients, I've had clients tell me the same, the, the two different things. We don't want someone that only sells four. We don't want someone that sells 100 because... We want people that are like us, that have a life, have a family, like, you know, other things. And, you know, one thing that, that, um, you know, last month we were at the National Association of Realtors uh, NXT conference down in Orlando. And one of the slides that was shared was the distance in which people are moving from where they are. Yes. 50 miles. And previous to that, it was really no more than 10. Like 10 and 12 and maybe as much as 15. And it's crazy when you look at this graph. Yeah. The difference, because for me, I mean, I'm, I'm with you here in Sandy mm-hmm. Springs, as you know, but that's like Blue Ridge. Right. <laughs> Elegy. Right. And I have zero desire right. to drive up there and show one or five or ten homes. Like, right. Not to mention, it's just not a good use of my time or my client's time. Well, and, I'm not an and expert how well there. do you know the exactly, market? Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, that that's where I think, and especially this is, this is kind of where I want to end it with you, because I think, you know, you're really, you're like a, a the perfect example, role model of what I think someone that should be connected to other realtors looks like because you have that abundance mindset. But also, people are moving 50 miles, and that's average, by the way. Right. So there's like half that's more and half that's less. Right. But on average, 50 miles away, which is a big deal. So creating those connections and relationships, that's why 
over the last two years or so, I've really tried to develop a great referral network in Georgia. Right. Because people are moving from Sandy Springs to LJ and Blue Ridge and beyond right. and across state lines and so on and so forth. Or even and to Peachtree City. And exactly. I don't know but Peach Tree even City. to your point earlier, if, if they used me as their agent to buy or sell or invest and now they're moving, I still have an opportunity to serve them. Absolutely. Right. And connect them with an. So I want to be all things real estate. I want to be the first person they think of, whether it's to redo some electrical work or renovation, add a porch on, whatever, or you're moving. Right. Because that's when, and, and I love to vet people <laughs> right. for my clients because I want to make sure it's a good personality fit. I want to make sure they're going to work well together. Like Most of the people of that I refer out have done work on my house. Yeah. I'll say, oh, this yeah. is the guy that did my bathroom. This is the one that painted the kitchen. This is the company that did my kitchen. Mm. This is who did my landscaping. This is my fence guy. You know, I've if I'm saying, okay, here's somebody that I just got from somebody else. They had a good experience, but I've not used them personally yet. Mm. There's only so many projects I can do in my own home. <laughs> well, that honesty and transparency, I think, goes a long way, too. Very good. Ariel, I really appreciate your time today. If someone's been listening to the last 30, 35 minutes and they're like, okay, this sounds like what I should be doing. It sounds like uh, she knows what she's talking about and it can bring me some success maybe as well. What would be the next steps? Like a book you would recommend? Um, how do we continue this conversation beyond just this podcast today? Yeah, so... I'm going to mention three books. One is one that I already mentioned, Strength Finders. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for a way to kind of identify what your strengths are and how to maximize those, that's I would recommend that book. I think it's Strength Finders 2.0. The other book is called The Power of Moments by Chip Heath. That is really about engaging with your people. Mm. And the third book, which is about customer service, is um, – be our guest. I like it. And Disney. it's based on Disney. Yeah. I love it. Um, and then I also wanted to plug some upcoming events that we have at the Realtor Center. Um, tomorrow we have a panel entitled How to Sell a House When It Doesn't Sell Itself. So <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that was based off conversations that we have. <laughs> That doesn't sound familiar. <laughs> no. So um, go to our website, mm -hmm. atlantarealtors.com, and you should be able to register. Yeah, click on events. You'll see the whole calendar there. You can search by committee. You can search by uh, month. I mean, and most of these um, events are free, but, you know, there are occasionally some, you know, opportunities for you to pay uh, a refundable deposit if you're part of the association. Um, you know, stuff where we have limited seating or limited availability is what it is, but um, absolutely. if you've never been to an event too, I think training and development is one of those that's really kind of like a, a nice way to get in. It's not always networking. It's not always a happy hour type YPN thing. You know, it's, it's a very easy way to get in and maybe fly under the radar and kind of get an idea of if you like it or not. Right. Um, especially if you've never been involved with anything here at the Atlanta Realtors Association. So, yeah. um, awesome. Well, thank you so much again for all the mm -hmm. insight, all the wisdom, really appreciate you and taking thank the time you. today. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Well, and everyone else, thank you so much for listening, subscribing. Make sure that you leave us a review. Um, you know, we're really working hard to bring you guys as much valuable content as we can today in every episode uh, with the Atlanta Realtor Rundown. So thank you all so much for listening, and we will catch you on the next episode. Thank you for tuning in to the Atlanta Realtors Rundown. Please subscribe, and for more information on how to get engaged, check us out at atlantarealtors.com. We look forward to having you join us for the next episode.